Hello there, I'm Scotty, and you're not. And uh, it's a summertime, right? It's a summertime. So I figured, you know, that's my keys. I figured, you know, why not take a look at some summertime themed Disney Channel original movies? So I'm gonna be camp covering both Camp Rock movies and both Teen Beach movies as part of this little four movie series type thing that I'm doing. And we're starting off with the original Camp Rock. Now, first, before I start, you may say, wait a minute, I thought you saved the Disney stuff for Diz Semper. That is true, but I got a lot of movies and I'm planning on getting more from eBay at some point. I'm kind of planning for October and December, you know, so. And other stuff is coming out. Like I plan to get, so my whole paycheck money that I get, uh, I get a certain amount of my paycheck every time. I, I plan on spending it all on horror movies from eBay. And then, like, I watched the Durant Cinemas video and he showed that everything, everywhere, all at once was out. I'm like, I really want to see that movie, so. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, I figured these would be okay. I got a bunch of other stuff I can do, you know. I got a whole shelf over there that I can do, you know. And I'm feeling I'm getting more. So, Camp Rock came out. 2008. Uh, it starred Demi Lovato and the Jonas Brothers. When the Jonas Brothers were big, not. I said they were big. They were popular at the time, and Demi Lovato wasn't wasn't unknown at the time. Uh, this was like her first role and everything. Well, besides Barney the Dinosaur, but you know. Which she also shares with Selena Gomez. So, yeah, they're both on that. But, uh, yeah. I remember when this came out, actually. Um, I recorded on the VHS because back then I still had a VCR. And they had a special airing of it. They, they, this, this was one of the first ones that they not only aired on Disney Channel, but they also aired, like, this one, I think it premiered on. ABC, like it was, it was, I don't know why it's so weird, I, it was on ABC, uh, and so, and they had the music video, excuse me, pajama pants, the music video for Burning Up aired after this, so I remember that, yes, I'm a Jonas Brothers fan, okay, I have two other CDs, the one titled Jonas Brothers and the one with, uh, Burning Up on, I forget what it's called, a little bit longer, I have those two. I like their music, so sue me. Uh, and of course, after this, Demi Lovato would go on to do Sunny with a Chance on Disney Channel, and the Jonas Brothers would get their own show called Jonas. Uh, both shows would last two seasons. Uh, the Jonas Brothers show Jonas uh, because they changed the tone of the second season. Like the first season was a, a straight up comedy. I don't know if it was like a sitcom, but it was a comedy. And then the second one, they kind of Turned it into one of those teen drama things. Kind of got out of it. And I, I like teen drama shows. But it was like, that's not the show I was, you know, into. And then Sunny with a Chance only lasted two seasons because Demi Lovato had personal problems. And then they we reworked that into So Random, which was the show within the show that, that the character of Sunny was on. And that didn't last long either, although it was kind of funny. But Cam Rock tells the story of Mitchie Torres. Who dreams to go to Camp Rock for the summer but her parents can afford it? That is until her mom gets a catering job at Camp Rock. And so now she's going. Uh, also going is Shane Gray. Rock star and lead singer of Connect 3. Which is the Jonas Brothers fictional band name in this universe. Um, and he's sent there so he can like... Like... He, he has this image of being like a cool rock star, you know, and he's got a bad attitude. So they send him there, hoping it will change him for the better, which, spoiler alert, it does. While there, Mitchie meets uh, Tess Tyler, who, and yes, I, I, get, I get the, when this came out, a lot of people accuse this of being high school musical during the summer. Even though we already got High School Musical during the summer. It was kind of High School Musical too, But they said it was sort of taking from High School Musical. 
and as, as the villain in this is a blonde teenager who wants to be the center of attention. And when this new girl comes in and starts taking that attention, she tries to ruin her life. Kind of like Sharpay to a point. And just like Sharpay, by the end of this, they sort of make up, although there's sort of another turn. Although I think Sharpay's turns, you know, antagonistic ways are done better than that in the next one. We'll get to it, but yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, she meets Allison Stoner's character, whose name I forgot. forget her name and you know they become friends but she wants to be with the popular when she finds out that Tess is the daughter of a popular singer TJ Tyler she wants to be with the popular people because you know that's teenagers kids they want to do that uh, but she, she so she lies say her mom is the president of top tunes t China or something I don't know and uh, she lies and all that stuff um, but she does end up connecting with Shane in more ways than one <clears throat> because she calls him out on his rock star bullshit right and so then they kind of connect and so he's like making music and stuff like that and let me say the music music in this is really good I have the soundtrack for all four of these movies that I'm reviewing <clears throat> it's good music you know good music here um we also meet Brown Cesario, which is the greatest rock star name I've ever heard. He was like the lead guitarist for the White Crows, I think is what it's called in this universe. Uh, and he's the head camp counselor, the head of this of Camp Rock. And Shane's uncle, who is British, but Shane is not British. I don't know. It's really weird. Maybe he couldn't do an American accent. I don't know, but it's, it's really weird. I think it's even weirder in the next one where they do a retcon with something, but we'll get to that uh, in the next one. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, he's, you know, spoiled, hot-headed, but then as the summer goes on, he starts to connect with Mitchie and stuff, but he's running from fans. He hides in these bushes outside of the piano room or whatever. He hears Mitchie sing, but when he goes to see who it is, she's already gone. So now his quest is to find whoever is singing that song. And yes, it's one of those movies where, you know, uh, you get together. But it is handled pretty well, I think. Uh, and, uh, yeah, and you got, you know, um, Tess has two little Peggy and the other one whose name I always forget. They, uh, they're like her little sidekicks. Uh, so instead of one Ryan, he, they have two. She has two other girls. And it's basically, she's a lead singer and everyone else. We find out that, like, when it comes to Tess, the world revolves around her. So, like, everyone who surrounds herself with, she considers secondhand backstage. And, you know, she surrounds herself with good talent, but she sees herself as the major talent. That's why she sits them to the side so she can be the star. She's one of those people where, like, it, she tried to do that with Caitlyn. And now, like, it seems every time she tries to do something, like, Caitlyn is doing pretty good. She's like, I remember her name. I didn't even realize I did until now. Caitlyn, that's her name. And she's playing the thing, and then she yells out, Snake. And even Shane can see through her facade. Even Brown, at, at one point, does see through her facade because she frames Mitchie. So, Mitchie's been lying. Caitlyn finds out because uh, there's this incident... Where a food fight starts. And all three girls, that mean Mitchie, Caitlin, and uh, Tess, get taken into the office. One, Mitchie was just standing in the middle. She didn't do anything, but she gets taken in. And then, like, when they, when he asks who started it, Tess is like, Caitlin, technically that's true, but Mitchie could have defended her, you know. And even, you know, that's not how it works. Trust me. Like, they'd be like, uh, Caitlin started it, but teachers would be like, but you didn't stop her, and you were also throwing food. So, Tess should also got in trouble, but didn't. Because we got to have a plot point where 
she has to work in the kitchen and she finds out that Mitchie is the daughter of the cook. You know. And Tess does some snooping. She gets jealous because Mitchie's hanging out with Shane. Because much like High School Musical, she needs to be with the hot guy, right? Like Sharpay wants to be with Troy. That sort of thing. That's, that's added in there. And then she finds out because of her snooping that Mitchie is actually the daughter of the cook. So... That all goes to hell. And in front of everyone, after Connect 3 plays a song, she humiliates her in front of everyone. And Shane, who gets pissed. And, yeah. There is a funny gag. Like, when he's looking for his, uh, you know, voice, they walk by and Kane is like, are she going to try? She's like, oh, it's not me. But it is. And, you know, he sings the song to her that, uh, gotta find you. Voice I hear inside my head. The reason that I'm singing, I need to find you. I like that. I love that song. But yeah, speaking of songs, though, something really weird. At the beginning of this, the song, uh, Who Will I Be, sung by Demi Lovato, plays. But later, when she's asked to sing a song, she sings that song. Now, with... Uh, Earlier in the movie, she does sing the, the big song, uh, This Is Real, This Is Me. She's playing on piano. But she's still writing that one. Her and Kayla put that together at the end, and she sings it then. But that's a fully composed song at the beginning of this movie for a montage of her getting dressed and everything. And then she starts singing it. If the song was sung by someone other than Demi Lovato, and then she's just singing it, because that's a song she listened to recently, that's one thing. But that's a fully composed song with her voice. She's singing it, and now she's singing it here. So it's very weird that they, she's supposed to be writing that, or... I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. We meet some characters. There's Xander and the other guy. And then there's the girl with the afro, whose name I forget, because she's so inconsequential. She's only in this movie. And barely gets anything to do. <clears throat> But, yes, we get, so, for the final strike at Mitchie, uh, Tess uh, hides her bracelet in Mitchie's books to frame her for stealing it. But Brown does catch on where he's like, uh, uh, I have no choice. I have to ban you from all activities until the end of Final Jam. And he says it twice after that. And he's like, my hands are crossed till the end of Final Jam. And that's how, how he says it. And like when, when she and Tess are talking, like they're working hard. When they're talking, uh, she, like he kept saying to the end of Final Jam. It's like I heard him. Yeah, I heard him. And then Demi Lovato has this creepiest smile. She's just like, like, Jesus. She's like, don't scare me, girl. But yeah, uh, so scary. So scary. But, um, yeah. And, like, the first time I watched this, I, I was confused. Watching this again, I got it. Like, I was confused. Like, why can't she just be in the final jam? Because she wasn't going to win. She wasn't going to win. And... This is their way of writing it where, well, technically, she's not in the final jam. She performs at the end of final jam. Even the mom at the end is like, I'm sorry you didn't win. And I'm thinking, well, no, she couldn't have won because it was after final jam. So the end of final jam. She's just performing. She's not in the contest because they didn't want her to win. That'd be too obvious. A lot of movies... Even earlier Disney movies would be like, oh, all right, she wins because she's the main character. She has to win. But, you know. And this is where the typical Disney formula comes in with Tess where we find out, oh, she's not so bad after all because her mom neglects her. Her mom is there. She's so excited. Then her mom gets a phone call that rings very loud over the music for some reason and catches her attention, causing her to slip up and... Yeah, it turns out she's not so bad after all. She just doesn't have a very good home life, which is the case for most bullies, but, you know, we could have an evil character. There isn't the next one. A couple of them. 
But, uh, yeah. And then we find out Peggy, or Margaret Dupree, she sings the song, she's pretty good. She's the one that ends up winning the Final Jam. But, uh, it's at the end of Final Jam, they come on there, like you said, to the end of Final Jam. He's like, I was so helping you catch on. And then they perform the song. And in the middle of the song, that's when Shane turns around and he's all like, Huh? <laughs> and he's like, That's the song. So that must be the girl, you think? You know, uh, which I like. And yeah, and they sing together. And it's that moment. Cause she's just singing her song. Even though the music crescendos to his verse, but he just like, you know, the voice I hear inside my head. And watch it this time. I caught it. Something in her eyes, like, it catches her when she realizes she has been this girl the entire time. You start singing, and her eyes light up. And you get that Demi Lovato creepy smile too, but she's like, because, you know, because she, she didn't think it, it's something she never thought she was anything. That's why she wanted to pretend she was something. Turns out she was like the holy grail to this guy the entire time, but she never, she always pushed it away. Even that one line, it's like, oh, it's not me. Trust me. I'm no angel or whatever or something like that. I'm no, I don't know. But it was her. And it, in that moment with her eyes, you can see that, and that's just good acting for Demi Lovato for her first movie role. Yeah. So yeah, yeah of course she doesn't win because technically she wasn't in the contest. But yeah, and there's the flirt moment between them two, and they do end up dating in real life too for a while. But um, yeah. Uh, so then, and then they sing the Camp Rock theme song, which does play instrumental earlier. But that's fine. And, yeah, on the DVD, this is like an extended edition. An exclusive musical music sequence. It's like an extended edition where there's a music sequence where everybody, like, Tess apologizes, I should say, because what I'm about to say next. They all go to Mickey's Garage, including Tess. You know, they, they're not all from the same town, but they're all able to go there. And they record a song. Even the Afro girl who's not in the next one. They're there They record a song that's on the soundtrack. Which was confusing when I got the soundtrack. I'm like, what is this song? And then it's on the extended edition of the movie. But yeah, Camp Rock is a fun film. Uh, it's, it, it, you know, if you saw my top 10 Disney Channel movies, it's in my top 10, more so than the second one. But yeah, pretty good film. It's weird. Both of these are going to be like these two. I really, really enjoy. But it's the sequels that I get iffy on. And I'll discuss that when I get to those. But when it comes to Camp Rock, I would say it's pretty, 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 pretty good. So what are your thoughts on Camp Rock? Let me know in the comments below. Make sure to like, share, and subscribe. Thank you for watching. Well, thank you for watching. I've been Scotty, and I'll see you in the next one.